Let's talk about what's still to come, the ending. What can you tease to me about how the rest of your journey will unfold? Are there going to be L-bombs dropped, more than one L-bomb? <laughs> um, what I can say is that I was had no idea I would be in the position that I was at the end of the season. Um, something that I didn't necessarily expect, something that I didn't think was possible for me. Um, and I'm excited for everybody kind of to see what that entails. Because I think a lot of assumptions are made, you know, of either who I end up with or if I end up with anybody. And when it comes down to it, I came into this knowing that I was just gonna stay true to who I was. And that means staying true to what you're feeling and talking about where you're at with your feelings. You've kept your cool pretty pretty well with all the, any drama that's gone down during the season. Are we gonna see that as a continuation trend or is there gonna be any moment of maybe like, I'm over this, I'm, I'm locking myself in the bathroom, Katie style? Oh, um, I'm, <laughs> I would say for me, I'm going to show emotion. I'm gonna cry, I'm going to break down. There are moments where you want to get away. I mean, you are in this position where you're having, you're like, you're exhausted. You've given so much. If you're doing it right, you've, you've just put so much in this and it's everyone responds to that in different ways. And for me, really collecting myself, really staying disciplined in what I'm feeling, how I'm speaking, how I'm communicating so that it's, I'm doing it in a way that can be received is really important to me. And so, as far as like losing my cool, you're gonna see me hurt. You're gonna see me be happy. You're gonna see so many different emotions. Um, as far as stomping off and, you know, and saying something that's necessarily, you know, uncalled for, not really my style. So I can't promise that you're gonna see that, but you will see emotion and you will see um, my genuine feelings. We obviously were talking about 200 episodes of The Bachelorette. That's a lot of source material for you to have watched if you so choose to or be a fan of. Was there anything that you've seen a past Bachelorette do that you either wanted to kind of channel or maybe avoid? Oh, um, I would just say that, I mean, even just watching Rachel with how she conducted herself and how she handled different conversations and she was just so elegant and, and how she navigated everything with all the pressure that was on her back. And so reminding myself to, when being in this position as a lead, that there are certain expectations that you may feel, but your job is to continue to stay true to who you are and set those expectations down because ultimately those expectations are not gonna help you find a person. Have you spoken to Rachel at all during the season, as the season's aired? Uh, yes, I have, actually. I just spoke with her earlier today. Oh, did she give you any good advice? <laughs> um, yeah, she just kind of, she's just been supportive, you know, and is just always willing to give me, you know, support whenever I need it. And I know that she's there for me. I know that she has experienced and felt some of the same emotions that I'm going through as a lead. And um, I really just appreciate that. Has there, I loved in the beginning of the season, seeing some of your students and seeing you in, in the classroom and stuff. Have you heard from any of the parents or like the community of either, we love watching you or, oh my God, it's our teacher, like anything like that? Um, everybody's just been really supportive, like overwhelmingly supportive. And, you know, it's just such a unique and different situation, but ultimately when I'm in the classroom, my family is my students, my coworkers, they all speak to me like I'm Miss Young. And I think that's the thing that I appreciate the most because during this really abnormal time, it's easy to just constantly think, talk, you know, surround everything bachelorette. And for me, what makes me super helpful or, just, or what, what makes me super happy or just fulfilled is doing my passion. And so they allow me to have that space to do that. Is it safe to say whether you are with someone or not, or however it ends that you're, I, you would want to be back in Minnesota, you want to be teaching, you want um, that part of your life to stay the same or no? No, I'm a, I'm a person who typically just 
embraces opportunities as they come. And Minnesota is where a lot of my roots stem from, but I've also lived in other areas as well. And for me, like I can't pinpoint whether or not I'm going to be in Minnesota, you know, next year or the year after that. I fully plan to finish out the school year, um, but I don't know what opportunities are going to come my way. And whether there's somebody involved in my life, whether there's not, you know, that's always would be a team decision. So uh, can't say that, yes, I'm 100 percent staying in Minnesota the rest of my life. I can say that I'm open to all opportunities, I'll take them in, I'll make decisions as I go, and yeah, make sure that I'm just happy with the work I'm doing.